Hello everyone, this segment is to let you know that this video contains a Stardock product and was made during the time that I was contracted as a content developer for Stardock Corporation, but was not made under that contract. Thank you for listening, please enjoy the video. Hello everyone, and welcome to game number one of our best of three series between Dubin and Dermis. Still looking at round number one of our current ongoing 1v1 tournament. Philothanic is going to be the one to join me for this particular match, so hello, welcome, hey. and what are we seeing? So, two things jump out at me, I guess a few things. There are nukes on the board, but there is this really nice scavenger spot right here. It's got two high, a high carbon, a medium carbon, it's near some water, near some silicon. Only has a medium aluminum patch, but pretty much everything a growing scavenger HQ colony needs. That's the one that jumps out right at me, steals high. Iron's high, carbon's high, fuel's high. That's about it. Everything else looks pretty scavenger normal, and Dermis does found. decide he wants that I uh, scavenger spot. I'm actually very surprised that went for as cheaply as it did. I was agreeing with you. That spot looks great. It's, I mean, you mentioned the medium aluminum, but aluminum doesn't get any better than that on this map in particular. It's adjacent right where you want it to. The only potential downside, I think, is the nukes, but... Nukes are going to be bad no matter who you are this game, because the iron wasn't looking too great either. Yeah, nukes are going to be bad for Dubin also. Uh, Dubin taking probably the second best spot on the map, going for a robot in the southern location next to some aluminum, some water. He's going to be shipping in iron there, which is a potential avenue for attack early in the game if Dermis decides to do like a quick HQ upgrade to two and then hit that iron very fast nuke onto that medium aluminum, although I don't think Dermis is going to be too broken up about that. He has a low that he can still use if he would like it. Gonna need to goon it, but I think he's gonna be okay. Dermis does get to HQ2. Gonna have to see what he secures this time. It's gonna be wind turbines already, four offices at the colony currently, and he does go ahead and expand onto this additional aluminum mine. Might even keep this other trace around for the time being, as it will give him an extra, oh, 0.75 aluminum-ish. A little bit more than that per second. Yeah, that's, Almost um, an entire extra low tile with the adjacency. It's a pretty reasonable for him to do. Keep it there, keep the aluminum. You can switch it out later, maybe to some wind turbines or something. It's right along the edge of a cliff. Power is rising. Power will be rising as uh, Dubin continues to ship iron now from two locations and with those two steel mills. So, and then I did, we didn't mention this, but we do have an American power colony, already four power modules on. So that's a lot of power being consumed by the colony very early in the game. Yes, it is. Whoa, that was very closely timed. That nuke landed immediately after the goon had been purchased on that aluminum. That was so close, huge swing at this early stage in the game to lose both aluminum tiles as Dermis. He is almost certainly going to have to take a low aluminum elsewhere on the map, but it isn't game ending because there is additional aluminum available and Dermis can go ahead and rotate these tiles easily as they're adjacent to his HQ. Right. What, it, what that will do is it might struggle for Dermis to get up to HQ too. He has no aluminum right now, but aluminum is only 25, so it's not end of the world just yet for Dermis in this game. Where is that other... Oh, but he will be shipping... A long ways for, a either, long aluminum way for tile. either aluminum tile. Mm -hmm. it, it is problematic, but it, it's not necessarily game-ending the way it could have been if a nuke bounces off a goon that early in the game. One thing that's really interesting with Dermis's base is he decided to put down an electrolysis reactor on top of this high silicon. Right just to claim it for later. I don't actually hate that as much as I might at other times. The reactor is extremely profitable, and it is valuable to go ahead and grab that tile for yourself. It will even be possible long-term to link those tiles up to your headquarters. The only thing I potentially don't like about it is the fact that he's also secured the water next to his base. I don't think that was necessary. Could have just paired up the reactors very easily and bought water that he needed for this, this right. particular level, but should water still be Water okay. is at three, mm -hmm. now four dollars a second. You you aren't struggling for water right now anytime soon, not to mention 
Dermis has a lot of water oh, close by. Nice. Yeah, this is a this is the kind of nukes that I was hoping to see in the last game with Fox versus Polina, but both players are going very aggressive very early, punishing punishing the Illumina. Illumina's gonna go skyward very soon after these upgrades go through. It certainly is, but I have to say, Dubin seems to have easily gotten the advantage so far off of all of these plays. Dermis, because of this mutiny in particular, Dermis has not been able to generate enough power off of these weaker wind locations to actually make cash off of it, despite his low amount of debt. And on top of that, he has to wait for these reactor shipments to come in before he has any amount of cash whatsoever, and Dubin is interfering with those profits by having a reactor down of his own. So, things not looking great for Dermis at the start of this game, and another mutiny comes down to make them even worse. Yeah, Dermis is... So somewhat ironic because Dermis does have the lower cooldown on the black market, but uh, he's getting the brunt of it yeah, at the beginning of this game. Yeah, not cash to actually use the black market is the big thing that's causing him a problem. Needed to be able to get to HQ3. If you can't do that as a scavenger, it's very difficult to keep that black market online. Dubin is at HQ3. He's going into four steel mills. Um, the only thing about going to four in this particular configuration is one power surge knocks all of them out although we're but, gonna uh, attack the power instead for now is dermis interesting i suppose dermis's power is going to be coming back online mm -hmm. well a little bit of it soon he he uh he is in triple a he only has three thousand power to pay through so i guess he wants to keep it up high but but these Dubin mutinies. with the immediate mutiny as soon as the defensive cooldown. These is mutinies done. are just causing so many problems. I think it was a great idea to commit to power in so many ways. I almost would have liked to see more of an overcommitment to it. Get rid of that reactor sooner once you realized this game plan was what you were going to be relying on. You just knock that down, go into that silicon sooner, transition it into a solar panel once you've got the cash for that or just the resources stored up and maybe you'll be okay from there. But as this upgrade gets further and further away, aluminum becomes more and more of a problem and the upgrade simply keeps moving further out of reach. Right, Dermis needs 19K for the upgrade. 14K of that is in aluminum, but she currently has none of it stockpiled up as the aluminum price is going higher with the Dubin's upgrades. And Dubin also moved into a low. Well, this is where Dubin's gonna help Dermis a little bit. He's selling down that aluminum as it's come in. So very slowly, Dermis's upgrade is going to cost less. Yes, very bit by bit as this low aluminum tile continues to churn it out. But Dubin, almost 20,000 cash on hand, black market cooldown coming up so he can get aggressive again. I mean, nukes still look great against the scavenger, EMPs, power surges both available to him, or he can simply become Upgrade two HQ levels or... ahead. I yes. Like uh, it's, Dubin's definitely in the driver's seat in this game. It's, um, it's his to lose at this point in time. We do have another EMP from Dermis onto Dubin's power. Dubin did put it in a triangle, which uh, makes it very susceptible to the EMP attacks. And none of them, nobody has been defending any of their power this game, so. No, just that one goon earlier, which got knocked out of the game the instant it came down from that underground nuke, so. But one thing I am concerned about, Dubin has been a little lax on his black market cooldown in particular. When you get this much of a lead, it can be so easy to abuse the black market and keep your opponent just stuffed down at HQ2, unable to upgrade. And so I don't like the fact that he's allowed Dermis to make any money whatsoever, which Dermis certainly is now. The other big thing, Dermis should be able to upgrade in a moment here off that food shipment. The other big mistake from here is attaching these wind turbines to the steel. There was no point in this. Steel's not yeah, all that profitable anyway, but... It doesn't care about the steel, it's just, it's like still you frozen said. frozen tiles. Frozen tiles, you could be using those for something better. Food, for example. Glass, electronics, anything that's making more money than steel right now. Yeah, even attempting a transition into glass, but can't actually do it purely because the tiles are still frozen. Just a big mistake to make yourself that vulnerable to black market for no reason. 
He does have a 10k cash lead and a two headquarters cash lead over Dermis. So I don't see <laughs> if this were a close game, <laughs> it would matter. It would matter, but at this point, I don't see it mattering, unfortunately, for Dermis. No, not really. Dermis, I mean, he just has to purchase so much aluminum to get to this upgrade, and Dubin did stop selling at some point. Just Right, it looks like a Dermis bought into the aluminum, and then Dubin immediately noticed he's making it easier for Dermis to upgrade, so he stopped selling it. Mm -hmm. uh, Dermis only needs 4.7. Well, oh well. Now 9.1k aluminum as Dubin continues to buy into it. Yeah, Dermis did get this extra claim for 18,000. He's going to be able to get aluminum off of that, but it is still some ways away before that first shipment shows up at the headquarters. And on top of that, Dermis, I'm okay with the decision because his power was frozen, but choosing to take that auction did ensure that he's not making money off power for quite a long time. Well, at this point, he, he needs the upgrade more than he needs to be making money on power. And if he can get it's some true. aluminum, it, it is goon, so Dubin will not be able to immediately nuke it. And hopefully he can just get that upgrade, get into HQ3, and maybe figure out some way to claw his way back into making it a game. Yeah, I love these pirates. Just every little bit. I want to see Dubin hitting every single black market cooldown right now he's not there it is more pirates gonna hit the glass with that i'd imagine but could actually just hit the pirates. aluminum very easily oh it's just yep. gonna be more on the food fair enough i would like to see the aluminum the aluminum is more valuable than the food at this point but that's okay yes uh, not to mention doing it on the aluminum kind of feels like you're uh, twisting the knife after you stuck it in exactly the opponent which uh when you're in a cutthroat game like awful trading company is always advisable Certainly, certainly is. The hacker array gonna get active for Dubin in just a moment here. Actually, we're going for an aluminum shortage. I wonder if Dubin has spotted that Dermis now has access to aluminum. Even so, the shortage likely still an okay decision, given that Dermis, you can't you can't win a game against HQ level four on HQ level two. It's just not going to happen. No. Dermis nuking out the only other non-trace aluminum tile on the map. It sort of feels like it's a little bit too little too late. But um, he does finally get to HQ3, so... Yes, and now Dubin has... has almost enough resources to kill him. We'll see what happens with that. This hack in particular could be absolutely massive. 96,000 worth of aluminum getting hacked. I still hate these food pirates because of the aluminum hack in particular. Right. But still could easily be enough here. Dermot just sure isn't pulling in any amount of money whatsoever. There's one up for auction now. No, it... Well, these reactors should help. Well, Dermot's still leaking water. Hasn't quite fixed that yet. Oh, that magnetic storm auction. No, hit the aluminum! Yeah, no, that was... You're hacking the aluminum. So. I mean, it's only 20 aluminum, but you're still hacking it, so you may as well get every last little bit you can. Just trade debt for that little bit more cash from your hack. Right, not to mention, not that it really matters at this point in time, but you don't give any cash to Dermis. You remove any possible likelihood of a comeback for yeah, Dermis there, by keeping him from upgrading. There is absolutely a skill in your opponent being at a... 5% chance to win, and then you knock that down to a 2%, and you try and find every angle you can to minimize that chance of them winning. There is certainly an advantage it in that. Doesn't matter at this point. Dubin has enough cash for the Biodermis, cannot defend himself, to, and is going to take the series 1 nothing. Yep, that aluminum, that bounce on the on the aluminum in particular, it was so close that I would imagine that Dermis went for the buy on the aluminum made sure at that moment his opponent hadn't bought a goon squad and just just went for the nuke but the goon squad was purchased just while that all was going on barely managed to get it down in time to deflect and while the game wasn't over at that point dermis certainly i don't think doing quite enough to secure his position afterward trying to make money in power in particular on hq2 i think was a very poor decision and it really cost him here yeah, it's um just just goes to sh show you that 1v1 compared to FFA is a very, very unforgiving 
game type an off-world trading company at least an ffa you have some if you get hit down too far you have some other people to uh, distract the person who's raining down the black magic but that's not the case in 1v1s you uh, dig yourself in a hole early by making a few bad plays your opponent realizes it and, and if they're good those, they will kill you for it yep you make those little bit they turn those little mistakes into big mistakes and that's kind of what happened here mm-hmm and not much more to say about this one, really. Just no money being made for Dermis at HQ2. Got his aluminum nuked out. Couldn't upgrade. That was the game, realistically. Yeah. A uh, nice, nice simple one for us to analyze. <laughs> yeah. Dubin, I, I do like Dubin. Dubin made good decisions throughout most of that game and how he was handling the situation. It wasn't necessarily 100% perfect, but that's a whole lot to ask for, especially when you're competing and maybe a little more nervous. And it was certainly more than enough to take the game. So, well played to Dubin. Kind of wondering if Dermis will bring it back for us a little bit in game number two. Yes, well, let's head over to game number two. Yep. Hello, everyone. Welcome to game number two in our best of three series between Dubin and Dermis. Quick one once again in game number two. Just a lot of struggling with aluminum. Low, medium aluminums all over the map and j nukes to deal with them really turned that game into something special with an HQ level 4 victory going over to Dubin. So we'll have to see if Dermis can pull it back in game number 2. Philothanic joining us once again. I imagine he's had a good chance to look at the map by now. Yeah, so this is an interesting map. If you look at the top left corner, there is a really nice science spot which Dubin decides he's going to take. Now the only problem with the science spot is it's next to iron, it's next to water, it's below aluminum, and then everything else, particularly silicon, is all the way on the opposite side of the map. So if Dubin doesn't need silicon this game it will be great if he does need silicon he's going to need to purchase teleportation or pay through the nose for fuel costs yeah it looks like both of them have ended up pretty far away from silicon in fact so we'll have to see we'll have to see how that goes how they're going to handle that this game it is machine shops of the colony not warehouses which could have made that even more interesting Yes, a Dermis deciding to go for the split high elemental quarry scavenger found, which is perfectly fine. Each of these tiles gets two per second, which is four per second, and there are no nukes on the map, so Dermis doesn't need to worry about his carbon being nuked out early. Certainly. Yep. Also a nice high tile for Dermis for the, uh, the aluminum metal mine, whereas Dubin, he actually stuck to a low that has no adjacency, valued that and the slightly reduced fuel cost for it than going for maybe an aluminum that could have offered adjacency if right. it became I'd, an issue later in the game. I'd definitely be tempted to uh, hedge my bets there and grab that middle aluminum. And it's not too much. You maybe go from 0.7 fuel to 0.14 fuel. Yeah, and that's, that's 0.07 that's kinda, in particular. So very... Right, sorry, 0.07. No, you're fine, so. but just a very, very low price for this fuel no matter what. Both players are keeping up with each other on the upgrades. Uh, Dubin going into food, which is going to be very nice. It started double. It's crept up to 151, which is another reason why I did like that science spot. Dermis also identifying that fuel is good, but Dubin immediately shuts it down with the black market. Yeah, interesting to me that Dermis is choosing to go into a chemical refinery on its own over here. While chemicals are extremely expensive, there's no pressure on them from the neutral colony for the moment. And on top of that, Dermis is already shipping reasonably far for his aluminum mine. That was the big downside to it. Almost half a fuel per second for that. Also is being forced to ship water and carbon. So that fuel price is very high. And it really makes me question this chem refiner if this was a strong decision or if it would have been better to simply move into an additional farm. An additional farm um, if you want if you're insisting on doing using a black magic tile, then a electrolysis reactor just to mm -hmm. cover some of that, that uh, fuel shipping cost. fuel costs. I think uh, Dermis founded second and upgraded HQ2 had a plan for all three of his all three of his claims. Is like, oh wait, I have one more. Better do something with it. That is kind of what this chemical refinery feels like in particular. It's actually already losing money. He has to scrap out of this. This was just. I wonder if this even made a profit once you count construction costs into it. I'm really not sure. Yeah, I, I don't think so. 
I'd, I would uh, tend to agree with you there. So uh, Derm is finding himself once again in a position you don't want to be as a scavenger with your opponent, the scientist, beating you to the upgrade HQ3. Yep. And, extra uh, claim auction. Yeah, this extra count. claim auction will give us a chance to see what everybody's doing. Dubin is moving into... Power. I'm turbines. assuming two wind turbines down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. With a map, he's uh, identified that this power price is creeping up and doesn't want to die to debt, which is something you always have to be a little bit concerned about as a scientist. Yeah, 24000 for that extra claim, but it is going to let him... Well, he could... He has actually several options now, because he has two claims available. He can add a third wind turbine if he would like to. He could get into something like double electrolysis very easily if he would like to. We'll just have to see exactly what he decides. But two claims, always so much better to have in the bank than one, as it just leaves so many more viable options open. Right. It all depends. Dubin is a B debt rating, so it's going to take a... And now those... Uh... Those wind turbines aren't going to be making money, power money, anytime soon as they've both been circuit overloaded. So I do think that move. Oh, he's moving into glass. glass yeah, which it's I find very strange. It right now, I would be tempted to go into electrolysis reactors, except that the wind turbines are off because they do, they do use money. But if those wind turbines were on, moving into electrolysis, you can just get this stockpile of fuel while your opponent is going even further into shipping things at HQ3. Just sort of make money off of your opponent. But um, Definitely could have been a nice option there. So yeah, I do agree with you. The lack of electrolysis reactors is a little strange. The, the primary advantage to it is it consumes a little less power, but it's only a little less power than the glass kilns do. So I, I do question this decision out of Dubin. I wonder how it's going to go for him. But right now, yeah. sea level of debt, things are not looking all that great, quite frankly. No, not to mention uh, Dubin did buy up a stockpile of silicon and um, has now decided that the glass glass uh, kilns were not a good idea and going into the electrolysis reactors, as we suggested earlier. Dubin here may not have made enough money to make that transition worthwhile either. Yeah, that one seemed a little bit lacking. I think a lot of players have struggled to get the feeling of how quickly those primary resource prices move in 1v1. Prices move faster the fewer players that there are in the game. They will change more rapidly with less pressure on them. And that's an important thing to remember when you're trying to purchase these stockpiles in particular. Just can't quite get as much bought up as you might have expected because you are going to be driving that price sky high. That said, Dubin's got four. Dubin does have HQ4. Dermis is still struggling, lagging a little bit on HQ3. The only thing that Dubin is should be worrying about right now is he is in C debt with a 122k in debt and power is still really high. Now both of his wind turbines are going to come back up. One of them is gooned. So Dermis only can take out one wind turbine at a time, but when you are in sea debt, taking out one wind turbine out of two might be enough. Certainly might be. Circuit Overload is actually going to land on it and go ahead and knock that turbine offline. So once again, Dubin's still leaking power, and even if he gets his third one online, which is going to be important, it is worth noting that there are slowdown strikes available this game to get through the Goon Squad. I still like the line positioning against Circuit Overloads, but slowdown strikes are going to remain effective here. Right now, the only thing is Dermis needs to figure out a way to get the upgrade. He just had his aluminum mine mutinied away from him. He's going into a second aluminum mine, which is Ooh, I don't like that. in the short term fine, but long term, the scavenger, he's going to want all the claims he can get against this uh, scientist. And that, that aluminum tile is going to be hard to transition into something useful certainly is chooses to emp out well frankly pretty much all of dubin's production for the moment rather than doing something like mutiny the tile back but i still wonder if this is correct there are no additional tiles available on the black market this is a very very heavy commitment we're talking about oh something along the lines of i want to say seven percent of all of your tiles across the course of the game committed to this extra aluminum so 14 percent of them total about is what it might be 12 to 14 Yes, and, and then Dubin right now is 
Hold on. Burning 113... 413, sorry, a second in fuel cost. He's added... He has gone for the silicon all the way at the bottom of the map, which was one of the things that we pointed out at the beginning of the uh, weaknesses of these two founding locations. So once this met, uh, other metal mine comes back from the mutiny, he's going to be paying through the road, through the nose in fuel. The fuel price was a little bit high. Dubin deciding to sell out of it once Dermis has moved into electrolysis reactors, but those electrolysis reactors are not even going to keep up with uh, D Dermis's shipping costs, nope. let alone make him any money. Absolutely. Well, I don't, I don't mind the cell still. There was the opportunity for Dubin to take an upgrade. He hasn't done it just yet. I kind of wonder what he's waiting on with this cash, what he would like to do with it in particular. Perhaps was just making sure he could use the black market. I'm not entirely certain. But these shipping costs, I don't believe Dermis was accounting for them as he was making his other plays this game, considering that he had moved into triple wind turbine one of them on top of some of his carbon which has now been mutinied away and is causing some serious problems quite frankly but wasn't perhaps accounting for all the debt he would be getting from all this fuel and was expecting to make some more money in this power than he was expecting he has gotten to four but you can see the cash difference between these players a whole order of magnitude difference between dermis and dubin right so dermis right now has an interesting situation he needs about 40 more k before 40k more in cash before you can get the majority buy on Dermis. Well, Dermis needs 60k to defend himself. So this dust storm won't help getting that extra cash as now his farms are only making 0.54 a second. So maybe it is the time to upgrade to HQ4, wait for this dust storm to pass, move into some more money makers, and then just finish out the game. Instead, he decides to pay down a bunch of debt. That's... Hmm. That would be interesting. That's, that's an interesting... Well, Dubin's got 105,000 now. He really is getting quite close to being able to do this majority buy. The EMPs continue to rain down, despite the fact that he's wanting to stockpile money, because he also needs to ensure that Dermis isn't successfully making any money. Keeping these electrolysis reactors offline, keeping these glass kilns offline going to be very very important if Dubin wants to go for the kill which he's acting more and more like that's exactly what he's looking to do he is which makes the paying off debt even more interesting I guess he wanted to avoid getting this C to D debt tick but if you're going to win the game in a couple of minutes then or less why do you care Dermis just leaking cash right now as well I, I suppose that's these glass kilns coming online he can no longer cancel them so his cash reserves are actually very, very small once those are taken into account. We are going to see a transition into a little bit more carbon, but it feels like it's going to be too little too late. Dubin is right on the cusp of being able to knock Dermis out of here. He, he has it. It's just uh, the slowdown strikes will make it a little bit more painful, but du yep, Dubin He's has it. He's going to clean it's it up. Yep. He will take the series 2-0. Strong, strong win over to Dubin. Managed to... I really, really like that decision in particular. Most players, I think, would have just simply gone up to five, been like, I'm still ahead of the scavenger, this is wonderful, and that's great and everything. But I really like this play out of Dubin because he was in so much debt in particular. You managed right. to just ignore that fact completely by cutting the game short before the debt can become a serious issue. And so, really well done identifying all of that and identifying there was an opportunity opened up by Dermis' potential mismanagement of his shipping resources. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see Dubin, by paying down that debt, first thought about going to HQ5 and then realized he's so close and thought better of it. So there's a good identification by Dubin. Yeah, it's a nice move. Not many players would have made that majority buyout this game. That's for sure. At least not at HQ4. Just strong plays out of Dubin there. Well, once again, we got to see most of the game and most of what was going on because we never actually went to the late game craziness. But I do want to check on a couple of details here just to reinforce what we were talking about. There is this idea that Dermis, let's see, Dubin sold down quite a bit of fuel. Dermis bought, auto-purchased in particular, 102,000 fuel this game. Oh. $102,000. At one point in time, Dermis was close to being able to make power money. He came within, I think, 
twelve k of paying off all his debt, and yeah, then he just so. went into uh, more and more shipping, which goes straight into debt. Yep. If he didn't go into that shipping, he could have potentially made some money off of those wind turbines. Then, uh, then Dubin's sea debt may have been an issue. Yeah, and that's definitely something Dermis likely should have looked to exploit throughout this game more and more was the idea that Dubin had acquired a lot of debt relative to Dermis in order to get this spot, in order to get online, everything that he was doing. The circuit overloads were available. The slowdown strikes were available to continue causing a problem in power. If Dermis had maybe identified all of that and simply done whatever he could to push the game long, things could have worked out okay, but instead he opens himself up to this majority buy because of some mismanagement and how he was handling fuel, unable to make money in power, just a continual sequence of problems resulting in this majority buyout. And chat's reminding us that he was very close to making power money and then purchased a, a claim. Uh, auction claim for 16k, which put him right back into yeah. the debt hole and then uh, never came back from it. Nope, never quite pulled that off, unfortunately. Black Magic asks a good question if there is somebody else to play for the moment. I'm actually not sure about the answer to that. Uh, me either. I like how Dubin managed to make $6,000 just by buying into electronics, letting it sit there while the con all he consumed a little bit of it, and then selling it later. <laughs> yes, those, uh, those little, little, little plays are always nice to see. And in some games, they will be the difference in whether or not you are successful. In this particular case, Dubin had enough of an advantage that it's unlikely that $6,000 would have mattered one way or the other, but why not make the move anyway, just in case? 